Wait, this is interesting start. A lot of coins. <laughs> this drop is actually going super fast right now. What's going on? This puck pick answers the timber and the PL. They've got a lot of AOE damage now to deal with the illusions, some magic damage to deal with the timber. Also, a really nice team fight to be able to protect the Phoenix egg. I think is the important thing as well. Because you already don't have, like. You're not going to avoid this game, I don't think. There we go. That's what I thought they were going to do in game one. To uh, directly counter the timber, and they'll do it in this game. I, this draw from LGD is really nice already. We'll see what. I mean, Sparking going to have to do something. Um. What are you the four with Timbar to You need an aggressive four to be able to kind of out harass. Although I guess they did have that lane matchup. Like it, the Ursa vs Timber was still remaining. pretty decent. I think Timber did a lot better, SG, but they still did have that decent lane matchup. It's that we see Timbers kind of go timber chain now, and you kind of just secure your CS and And it's very hard to be able to kill someone with that mobility early. Because if he goes reactive armor level 1, then he doesn't have no escape. You keep just chasing him down. You just allow the Ursa to stack up or Ten Monkey King for this example. Five I like the charm. They need a catch, which they were lacking. So some way to deal with the puck. Good. Take objectives, which the Timber and the Phantom Lancer don't give them. And it's a decent lane as well. Gives you, it's a hero that can trade relatively well. The other shocks a lot of dam damage. The right clicks too. Let's see if this is a puck mid though. If I think they might ban the TA. If they ban the TA, it just keeps the flexibility of being able to put the puck mid. Or they can actually, you can keep the TA in the pool. Is sparking arrow TA, then you just go like Husker or something. Or like Razor and you just counter that hero. And then you put the puck on a, on a support. Although, I say that, Puck Phoenix, I don't know how much I like that support duo. Mm, it's okay. No. Need some water, that's what I need. You know, go stay hydrated, laddies. We're in, in the time of the water consumption. I don't know what the what I mean by that. I can never say no to good water. Keeps me uh, energized, you know. I'm just going off on a rant, honestly. Just trying to keep the keep the fluids up while we wait for this to come through. But what are they looking for? I I guess you can still. I mean, you're not going to flex the monkey though. Like, it was definitely going to be up against the Timber. They can maybe dodge the lane and go, like, Timber versus Centaur. I really- that Dazzle Ban is super nice. They'd have so much to stay in then. They can TA if they want to. I don't like TA versus PL, though. I think they need another way to deal with the uh, illusions. Um, I think DD has to go the Yule's build this game. He's got to go the magic damage build this game. The one thing I... I don't like Storm vs. PL. I don't like Storm vs. PL or Timber. I feel like you don't kill those heroes. Like... I mean, yeah, they don't, like, peel off is kind of some kill threat on the Storm, but it's not the other way around. It is nice, like, they, it is a good Storm game. Like, they, they have only the Shaman. And when you only have one hero to be able to provide catch, then Storm will just jump in at the start of the fight. Or you jump the Chen. So my issue is, is that, I, I mean, it, I think Sparking going to be really, really hard to kill. Like, they'll have a good lane. I say that, but... So it's, it's a phoenix with a monkey. They'll put the puck on the four. 
Do they swap the lanes? Can they try if Peel Chen Shaman against the monkey? Uh, I don't think you can. I don't think you can swap up the lanes. I think Timber just has to eat that matchup, <clears throat> which is a little, it's a bit rough. But we saw Timber could have a relatively good time. He, he laned well versus the Ursa, honestly, in game one. So I think OP is going to be fine. He's also got a relatively decent laning support in the Shaman. I'm just trying to work out what draft I like. Well, LGD have a lot better team fight. I just don't think they have answers to the f to the Phantom Lancer. Like the monkey doesn't deal with illusions. Neither does the storm. Really, the storm's not the worst. Like you can kind of get ahead of the peel, and then it's okay. But I think the centaur and the puck really has to to lift the weight this game. Because this, I mean, the Sentinel absolutely destroys the Phantom Lancer. So it, it, it's going to be a game where I think Old Eleven has to kind of take over. Oh, is he ain't got nothing right now. What's my man Old Eleven getting? He's going to get Ring of Taras, maybe? He might. I imagine he was. Yep. <clears throat> 650. I, I, that item was so nuts when we were, uh, we were seeing teams get it. Or players get it first item. I mean, it's still pretty nuts now when you're, yeah, when you're able to pick it up straight away. But even then, what are they going to do? So they're going to put the Timbersaw bot. So they do swap up the lane. They're, they're going to put the Monkey King. Hmm. So they're going to aggro this. Okay. So this is the good thing about the Timber, though, because you're a hero that the, right now the off lane pull is pretty much full strength. So you always have this flexible choice to be able to put the Timber versus uh, a 1v1 matchup versus the enemy's offlaner. So Timber's going to beat this matchup with, with absolute ease. And I, I think he can solo it as well. Like there's not much FY can do to kind of turn that on its head. And you see Dai, they've, they've got a pretty deep uh, ward as well. Like nothing kind of... Nothing around like this backside or, or even here as well to scout out if anyone's blocking the creeps or at least moving up with the creeps. So uh, it looks like they're kind of aware of it though. Monkey's going to go join them. Like I thought even Monkey might kind of scout at the lanes here. So looks like they're well aware. This is beautifully done. They'll somehow they uh, have a little bit of a, a feeling that this swap up's going to occur. So they'll be able to follow the Timbersaw. We saw in game one how the, I think it was PSG OGD, how they smoked up and put a ward up on this high ground because of how important they, they wanted to find the lanes of the, the Ursa versus the Timber. It's identical this game. You want the monkey versus the Timber and they're going to be able to get it. Once again, OP goes for the Timber chain level one. It's a very nice way to, like I said, you know, if you have reactive armor, then the enemy team just completely beats onto you. Now with the chain, you've got a, a decent amount of mobility. It's also nice to be able to secure your range CS as well. And it gives you harass. Like, the pure damage is nuts. In 100 damage, it's also pure. So, going th not having to worry about any magic resistance. But I think both these mid laners are going to farm. Like, they're just going to try and shove out the lane, fall back to the jungle. You see Somnus 7 and 0. DD, of course, once he has to kind of utilize with the raises. But... So, I think that... A uh, top matchup... <clears throat> Old 11 should do a, a really well here. You already see the constant harass coming through. Fred Pandas. Can I give him the treatment at the moment, actually? Has X never got a headdress? He does. Okay. He's going to have the, the oh, Ring of Trask and the headdress. So it'll be a lot of regen for, for Old 11 here. He should be fine. The beautiful thing about the Centaur is that the illusions stack up your Retaliate. And the double edge is also a really good way to deal with the illusions. Once you get this maxed out, have a little bit more strength as well. For that strength to damage. You're going to have a, a decent way to be actually be able to deal with that, that hero. So early on, I think PL, if, you know, Puck's able to get levels, uh, if Centaur is able to get levels, then they should be fine. I, I think Dai are going to have to take over this game. Like, going late into a PL Shadow Fiend, like, the Chen's probably not going to offer too much. And I guess I, they are going to lack a lot of team fight later on. That's the one good thing about the Dai lineup, is that you've got the mobility coming through from the Storm. And the monkey, so you can just shove out the waves because Radiant don't have a whole lot of catch right now. But also the team fight is, is going to be tricky for them to be able to take. So the PL and Shadowfin have to be in a really good stage. 
And oh, I mean, I love this as well. The uh, the retaliate is dispellable, so you have the purge coming through from that Chen, so it gets rid of the the little bit of the lane presence you can provide. At least, and uh, they also do the, they're going to pair up the puck with the Monkey King as well. Something I haven't said just yet, but I mean, mid lane's going really good for some. This this is a nice thing. Any ranged matchup versus the Shadow Fiend. I mean, early on, you know, we'll see the Storm probably have this advantage until DD's able to get a couple more levels, then he can harass the Storm out. By level 5, I don't think Storm can actually lane here because he does have very low attack range. You see 480, and sometimes you like to get on top of the Crete Wave to find the Remnants as well, but top, old 11. Taking a decent chunk of damage. They need to find this Seedor, and it looks like even X Nova, he's going to commit for it. They <laughs> deny it up there, but I mean, that seed is just causing too much problems. Too many problems here. Are they, are they still getting aggressive? No. Okay. I am really intrigued on how Old Eleven wants the skill build. If he, I mean, he's probably going to max out Retaliate. And then if he does max out Double Edge as well to deal with the Illusions or just uh, the Hoof Stomp. Because it doesn't... I mean, it's just... The stun duration doesn't go up by much. It looks 2.5. It's just a cooldown, which is the important thing. Decrease by 3 at each level. Men are up by five as well, so yeah. I guess the damage, but yeah, it's it's mainly the cooldown that you're looking for in leveling up the hoof stomp. But uh, at the moment, we're still yet to see first blood. We might potentially around the bounty runes as they do come through. Felix just kind of trading out with their fire here. So OP thirteen to two compared to the fifteen and nine. Looks like OP again is having another really good time in this matchup that isn't really favored for the timber you know we saw him struggle well not even struggle actually he you know he should struggle versus the ursa game one he didn't he had a good lane game three as well with this timber he's having a good time here you know it's not like he's out csing the monkey but this is a lane where chelis should be able to kind of at least this is a matchup where you should be able to out kind of damage him in the lane and force him out early so they're doing a really good job in that regard. Puck might be able to find another Corey here, but not the case. Chelsea as well. It does have that extra level. Just going to put it in the balance track here. So it's going to be interesting. This is another thing I'm always intrigued on. You know, the monkey. We see a lot of time like the 202 build. They're going to get all four runes as well. So FY just not putting enough emphasis on these uh, on these bounties, unfortunately. So they'll snag all of them. Really nicely done. And right now, I mean, oh, yeah, you see OP is not getting a lot, but... At least he's able to kind of get the experience, which is the main thing. And once you hit level 6, you've got Kill Threat on the Monkey. Timber's a hero that you have to shut him down throughout the laning stage. Because if you don't, he's going to just be able to come back online. Like, once he gets the items, he's always going to have a whole lot of damage. Because the pure, so you don't care about the magic resistance. You don't care about any armor as well, of course. So it's going to be a difficult thing for them to actually be able to deal with him. I'm a little worried right now. So you have to see. At the moment, looks like both mid laners just shoving out the lane. I mean, the, this is a good thing, and it feels like a lot of the time what we see on, on mid heroes, you kind of pick someone that has a way to be able to flash farm and then fall back to the jungle early so you can give the support the lane. But they're actually going to rotate Somnus up top here. Felix is going to mirror the movement as well. I mean, it is the four and not the two. Or instead, we're going to see the Shadow Fiend down bot. So with the Invis, it's got three points up in the Razors here. But the Silence preventing the Razors to come through early enough. So it opens up Chalice to find first spot and top the Vortex. Drag back, Old 11. Able to find the Chain Lockdown with the Hoop Stomp. A bring down the Phantom Lancer. Felix going to end up losing his life as well. It's a double kill for some. This really nicely done from LGD. They find three kills across the map. They get first blood. Two kills up on the Storm as well. Really, really nicely done from them. You love to see that too. A, a, a good attempt for the Shadow Fiend rotation, but unfortunately, if he didn't get Silencer, he might have actually been able to f kind of force away LGD with all that magic damage he would have had, but unfortunately, just not the case. And let me take a look. So I'm intrigued. Do they have. They just got a uh, double stack at the medium. Nothing set up, so looks like this time LGD haven't gone for too much uh, stacking orientated as OP. Getting chased. They just don't have the, the damage right now. Chellis losing the Jingu stacks has gone for a 2-1-3 build. 
So sometimes I see the, the 202 and then you go back to maxing out the primal spring just because it gives you really nice weights to be able to flash farm. You know, this is a hero that you don't really... We see him go for like Echo, Diffusal, Echo, BKB. N not really going for that uh, farming efficiency item, whether it's the Maelstrom, whether it's a Battle Fury. So I'm just going to be careful here. DD's still in the area, actually. He does have a fair amount of movement speed, but I'm not going to be able to clip on the raise. I think you see another rotation coming through as well, just giving some emphasis. Oh, they got a regen. Wow, Somnus would have loved that, but still. Down bot though, Chalice. This is the level six. As soon as OP picks this up, he's going to try and man fight though. A dive will come through. I don't think they have the damage to kill OP right now. Yeah, he's just going to turn it. I mean, the strength hero, Phoenix, just gets shredded by the Whirling Death. That was not a rotation they can force out there. And you see Radiant, they're going to put pressure on the tier one mid here. Have the neutral creep tank up. Of course, they are lacking the catapult, but you take a look. Surprised at how DD's more playing around mid and not farming up the jungle and giving this lane over to Felix, who is kind of the paying the price right now with the level wise, but they're going to make a rotation. This isn't going to get scouted out just yet until the lanes hit, so Monkey should be aware of this. Cello is starting to back up, but Felix already trying to cut him off here. Can't yet get the Primal Spring off fast enough. They will even commit the Stampede. Stuns onto the two, but it's not going to matter. It's not long enough. Or will it? Chalice, okay. Not the stun. Only 0.8 seconds, but it helps out with the Stampede. It was able to find the distance and beautifully done. So that movement all for naught now. Didi's able to just TP back to mid straight away, but they're going to wrap on him. Radiant, they do have this Observe Ward. So they'll scout out Somnus' movement, but still they're going to attempt the dive. Chen's in the area. They're also going to TP in the Shaman here. DD, relatively, I mean, level 8, that's a difficult kill for them to find, as we see Chalice actually is able to bring down Felix, I believe he cancelled the TP out around the power rune, sorry, I should say around the bounty rune. Uh, OP has a mango to work with as well, he's about to get the Jingu stacks, he's going to be fine, how's this top lane going? Sensor, second in net worth, old 11, incredibly well with farming right now. We're still just seeing this game ramp up. I mean, we're about to have that 10 minute interval, and Somnus is getting very active early on. Red Panda, one more right click, secures the kill. They do get the shackles. Oh, he stole the arcane as well. Oh, nicely done, Didi. Actually, didn't want to try and utilize the shackles to find the kill there. Thought they didn't have enough damage, so he will snag the arcane away from the Shadow Fiend there, which is that would have been beautiful for him. Refills the bottle. He's going to increase his farming as well. I really thought he was going to go the Yule Scepter build. I mean, I guess he can still go treads into it. We'll see what he does want to go here. I mean, I think the... Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Yules, actually, this game. It's a really nice way to cut out the monkey. They're lacking lockdown, so they need some way to be able to cancel TPs. And it's also that you can Yule Scepter up the storm and get the Requiem charge. Like the Storm has a little bit of a cast animation with the zip, so it should be, if you time it relatively well enough. But let's see, I mean, this is the second catapult. Team's not making any rotations just yet. Old 11, he's just gonna sit in his top side. Whatever tower is most pressured in, Old 11's gonna be there. He's the tankiest hero right now from PSG OGD, so the one to definitely protect these. And feels like SAG, they're the ones that aren't really on too much of a timer. You know, it looks like both mid lane is just trying to farm up in the jungle. They'll give the supports the experience they were needing. See, very low level at the moment in the supports. Dire, they both just hit six then. Whereas Chen's still only four. Hasn't been able to find too many movements across the map. Red Panda hasn't been farming the, the jungle a whole lot either. I mean, we usually don't see the Chen farm too much. Maybe, I mean, he's only got, I think, eight last hits I saw. Yeah, so sometimes usually Chen by this stage is up to like 16. Which, you know, it's only doubled it by... You know, you're only doubling the county has now, but it's still a, a decent chunk. As I see some movements, however, coming through top. Radiant have a really nice observe ward around the outposts, and they smoke up too. Somnus again getting super active across the map here. Radiant, do they have TPs? DD does. He's also got a double damage rune in the bottle. OP also has a TP available, so... That smoke is not going to work out here, unfortunately. They don't catch anyone, but still, they've got the net worth advantage at the moment. Somnus. I wouldn't mind seeing the Storm just farm up the Kaya, then get aggressive. Looks like they were still trying to shut down the Phantom Lancer. Both position 3 heroes are very aware of how they need to play it. Like, you're playing in what usually would be considered the dead lane. 
like your each team safe lane they usually lose that tower first unless mid lane doesn't go very well or you're against like a dk or a, or a death prophet centaur auto level won't be able to find the shaman here so what they're doing is you know timber's already set up to be able to deal with the, a push that's eventually going to come through from Dyer once they do get aggressive. They're going to attempt here, though. Whoop. They definitely need another hero. Uh, Xnova's only got... He doesn't even have a point in Sunray. Okay. This kill... Uh, they might have to use Coil into the egg to find him. Even Wukong Command, they'll commit everything to find the Timber. There'll be a couple TP rotations coming through. Are they fast enough, however? That's the question. The Valor Strike finds through. Rainy, can they get there fast enough? DD charges up the Requiem. They will still lose the Timber Saw. And now with the Stampede to disengage, however, Pock. Orbs up in a couple seconds here. Should be safe. Die, they're going to collapse. Radiant. They use the Requiem. Shaman's going to get brought down. And now Somnus with the Vortex in. Finds the Shadow Fiend. Oh, what a beautiful kite coming through from LGD. Very nicely done. I mean, they just TP straight on top of the Wukong's command, and that's not really straight on top of the Wukong's on top of the Supernova. And Dai, they've got the outpost control as well, so now it's a 5,000 net worth lead. Really nicely done from, from LGD there. They had to commit everything to kill the Timba, they eventually did, and then and then Phantom Lancer doesn't have. I mean, Phantom Lancer has Hood. So they have double Hood right now, not a lot of damage. And Red Panda is probably going to end up dying as well. Somnus has an Arcane Rune. It's going to pop it straight away. They'll even deal with the or the Chen army. This game just all of a sudden got really scary. And I think because Shadow Fiend is going for this physical damage build, instead of... I mean, the Yours allows him to play a lot more active early on. If they take towers, like, this game could just be over in, like, 10 minutes. Like, if Somnus snowballs this game because they don't have very nice catch... It's going to be an issue. Is under you see that he's able to get very aggressive early on because he's not worried about getting caught out here. And he's also got this protection of the of the Stampede as well. But what do Radiant do through fights? Like, they don't have a team fight lineup, so that engagement down bot felt awkward. Like, even though Dai used the majority of, of their abilities to kill the Timber, like, still the Wukongs was dropped in, well, in the back line. Felix drops the Serpent once, Shackles. So only level two, so Somnus should be able to stay alive. They're even going to be able to protect him with the Silence as well, popping out the Shackles here. Som has to just zip defensive. Now the stun, Chalice finds three. I thought they were going to follow up there. Looked a lot better than what it was. They even used the Hand of God. So hyped up a little bit, but I mean, it's just another kill that Storm's able to be involved in, gets out straight away. And they use Serpent Ward. So right now, Radiant, without Serpent Ward, they can't pressure towers at all. And they're just going to take over the map. This is actually, this is worrisome. God King. Instead, they'll use the Stampede, trying to find the Chen. Mech's not going to be enough to keep them alive there. They've got a really nice ward on the back line as well. Dyer going to get... And very similar to how PC LGD played game one, where they just ramped up the pressure. They're going to do the same thing this game. And I think it might be a bit too fast for Radiant. Shadow Fiend still hasn't got that first item just yet. I mean, Peel going for Hood. Hood the Fusil, you are able to join in fights a lot earlier. But I think that you still just see the Hood isn't going to increase the farm at all. Mm. Tricky stuff. I mean, I don't disagree with the hood because of the amount of magic damage that I do have. But I think this now just doesn't amplify. Like, if you lose the jungle, you can't really flash farm at all. And we're kind of seeing, like, his net worth is falling further and further behind. They do have the Shadow Blade, though, on the Shadow Fiend. Even with the Grove Bow, which is nice. That little bit of magic resistance reduction. Reduction of the magic resistance. Probably say the reduction word first. That would be easier. Radiant. That's a nice vision down in the area. Uh, they've got three heroes here. Stampede's on cooldown. They do see a couple as well. I mean, they're going to try and TP and defend this. So OP leaves top. Now, this should open up Dyer. As soon as they see the, the timber not there, they're going to push out this top side of the map. And Radiant, they're going to smoke up. They know they don't. They can't be top anymore because the timber's not there. They're gonna link around. They see Somnus, anticipating him to go to the jungle. They've got the observed ward, so they scout a bit. How do they set up? They don't have the stuns. Felix. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. If he can get close enough, they're gonna try and charge the requiem to get the drag back here. This should be enough to find the kill. Really nicely done. Great execution there. 
They dropped the Serpent once as well right next to the tier 1 tower, so they will be able to take this. Yeah, they had to get the Requiem drag back to allow the, the Shaman to run around before he could zip away. But they're, they're going to lose the tier. So tier 1s get traded mid for top. But they also get the kill on the Storm, who's been farming up incredibly nicely. They're going to wrap down bot as well. OP, if he can bait long enough. Die, they've got the ward on the higher gun. They hold 11. Oh, he's baiting right now. They're going to try and take the fight with the coil onto two. Shadow Fiend will be able to break it here. But do they have the detection coming through? It looks like they do with the sentry drop. Chalice finds the kill with the bow on the strike. OP able to make it on the higher ground here. Timber Chain's going to be up in a couple of seconds. They've already used the majority of the lockdown. So I don't think they'll be able to catch the Timber. Chelsea is attempting. I mean, th I don't think they catch that. Yeah. Shadow Fiend does end up dropping second time this game. But, I mean, they're still... PL very close to Diffusal now. Ooh, they have a sentry? They don't. So they, they find the Phantom Lancer. Brady have a very nice ward in the area. They're going to see X Nova. They're able to get the Doppelganger down to the low ground. Looks like God King will be able to stay alive. Yeah, the, with the vision shit up. They should be pretty aware of that there's vision in the area. They don't have any sentries at the moment, though. Wow, FY is actually going blink next. I thought he might go Spirit Vessel into the blink, considering you're against the Timber. But it looks like they want this initiation, which, because Centaur is going for a lot more utility. I mean, it, with the Lotus Orb, there's absolutely no way you kill the Storm. You chuck even Monkey King as well. Of course, the Bloodstone. He's about to have it. Getting aggressive. Chalice on the high gun. God King actually uses the doppelganger already, so he's going to be careful to drop the coil. Beating onto the illusion right now, but they'll soon find the real Phantom Lancer with the egg dropped as well. PL is going to end up falling. Red Panda's next target. They've got the follow off. The catch is there. Oh, they're not done. Storm the zip. Felix trying to play around. Somnus doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Oh, uh, 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 Phoenix? Uh oh, okay. Felix just dropped him. I was going to say, uh, I don't think you want to be there, brother. That Ether Shock is a whole lot of damage, even just level two. Radiance top tower is under attack. Very nicely done. Look how much the return's doing. I mean, not a lot through backdoor protection, but once it does disappear, they just are able to push relatively fast here. Yeah, uh, this is, should be Bloodstone now completed. Radiance top tower. Bloodstone blink. I mean, they're hitting the timings right now from PSG OGD. Eight thousand net worth lead. This is about uh, this is about normal by uh, Bloodstone timing. He's neck and neck with the Shadow Fiend. Like Shadow Fiend still is getting a lot of farm. DD's about to have the Dragon Lance. Does does he need a BKB? I feel like yeah. I don't. I actually don't hate the Dragon Lance. Kind of tank him up a little bit in damage as well. But all right, they find the Timber. They need a perfectly chain lock him down to allow the Monkey King to follow up. He even breaks the chain as well. So they should be able to secure with a kill with the damage from Chalice. They really nicely what played there. The full coil duration to the hoof stomp. Chalice gets there in time. They can rush as well. They've got Desolator. If they give the first Ages over to the Storm Spirit, he can just now take over the game with the Bloodstone, but... What's the probability? We've seen a lot of games where it's just kind of hit this timing where the enemy team is just kind of taken over. Oh, long zip in. Somnus. This DD trying to find the Shadow Fiend there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. They should know there's a... Ward in the air. It looks like X Nova. Yeah, you'll be able to get rid of it. He's also going for an Aghanim. So, I mean, they don't have a way to deal with the egg. Phantom Lancer's okay. Shadow Fiend's decent as well. Auto 11. It's very deep. He does have the Stampede. Trying to solo kill Red Panda. But now with the rotation, F5 finds the Sans. Breaks the shackles. Old 11 still going to end up dropping. Phantom Lancer now has the Diffuser Blades. And the timing's going to come through. F5 caught out. Nicely microed from the Chen. With the Dark Troll, someone are able to find the route. They dive a little bit too far there from LGD. They'll pay the price. They lose two. Reveals the blink as well from the Centaur. Went for it uh, before the Lotus. Wait. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yes, yes. Uh, so they do drop the Serpent Wards though. So the, you see the pressure they're able to put on towers without this. I mean, I guess Shadow Fiend still has some decent amount of items. And he's going to go BKB. Okay. I mean, I knew that the Dragon Lance are going to give you a little bit more damage, but the BKB also just kind of... It does increase the damage you're able to output because you don't get chain locked down or you don't get bursted. So if you look at it like that... But he feels like he's in a spot where he's able to get this item now, whereas before he, he was not there. Timber's about to have a Hellbit as well completed, which is really good against the Monkey and the Storm. Against it, I mean, the Storm gets a lot of his damage from the Overload. 
So without being able to right click, it's it's a real big nuisance. So they're going to smoke up. They still want to try and make something happen. They know they have all the ultimates available. It uh, looks like just Stampede. So they know they can take this full five on five fight. Who they can who can they find though? That's the question. DD will run into Chellis here. We'll be able to disengage. They've already got to kill the sentry. Well, the, I feel like everything just gets dewatered now. Okay, they didn't lose the sentry here, the coil. They find the Shadow Fiend, gonna try and get the Requiem, but the silence prevents that. Nice catch from Puck. FY once again being able to start there. And now they're just gonna move top straight away. Do they have TPs? OP does. Felix does with the long zip in. Oh, it doesn't. It actually cancels it, okay. But they lose the tier one here. Still getting, I mean, they're starting to, the, the net worth lead isn't growing, which is the important thing. It's actually kind of staying afloat. Oh, just kind of jump back down, actually, I say. I guess the kill on the Shadow Fiend actually helped out there, but. Die, they don't use any big ultimates. I mean, the coil, but it's up in 30 seconds. I'll just continue pressuring. <laughs> the glyph just protecting the creep wave there. I mean, it was more the tower, but it was the fact that FY almost caught it out as well. I think it was more just preventing any timber from getting aggressive, playing around with them in their face, because they do lack. I mean, you have two very slippery heroes from PSG or GD. Like, if you want to even include the Monkey King in there as well, like, and already, I mean, Monkey's also got a BKB into the battle for your next item, so and they're, they're ready right now from Dyer. They've got a huge advantage with the items. You know, we're still waiting to see the big kind of set. And Piel's actually going to go a hell with himself. So they're really going to go for a lot of disarm. Timber has his. Hasn't needed the Yule Scepter just yet because he, I mean, there's no Spirit Vessel to dispel. Uh, I believe he is going for it next item though. I mean, it is still a very good Spirit Vessel game. The Silence from the Pock giving you some protection through the coil, but... I, I like this. Finally, LGD have been like, we want to fight you. We keep smoking up. We keep taking your objectives. We've found all the T2 towers. We want to take an engagement. And SAG have been like, no, we're, we're not in a spot. We don't have to line it where we can full five on five fight. So they're just going to say, frick it. We're just gonna, we're going to walk in Roche. We won't even smoke up. We won't do anything. We'll walk in. Yes, all the lanes are pushed out. But if you fight us in Roche, we've got Coil. We've got Supernova. We've got the Monkey King Wukongs as well. We've got so so much of an advantage inside that roach pin now felix i'm not gonna get caught on the initial zip here but someone should still be able to secure the kill trying to find these bloodstone charges felix unfortunately will just stack up there for the storm at least delays this for as long as possible that's the main thing <laughs> i mean it's more of a nuisance than anything but insomnus now has this orchid completed 16 bloodstone charges for the storm doesn't need... I don't think he goes BKB. Oh, he might go BKB just because the mana burn, Shadow Fiend's magic damage, the Timber's spell damage, and even the, the Shaman. I, I The reason why I say he might not, just because you have the Lotus Orb protection, and you're not really going to get controlled. Like, you can just go... F Ooh. Well, that's rough. That's actually really rough now. Can they pressure? Going higher ground, I think, is difficult. Zip in, they got the Orchid now, Somnus uses a lot of the mana here, Radiant in the air, if they're able to get the Requiem, but where's the Shadow Shaman? That's the question, they need the fall block down. Mech's gonna get used to give him some protection, now the Centaur's caught out here, the Shackle Serpent Wards drop, a lot of damage in the Boundless Strike, so Chen pays the price here. OP will be able to make it on the back line, so it's a one for one, they do lose the Centaur though. Didn't use that Lotus Orb to be able to protect him up. That's the one thing, I mean... <laughs> Oh, yeah, just not utilizing that item, unfortunately. How close to Spirit... Oh, sorry, Yule Scepter is Timber. Okay. He could be in trouble because of the Spirit Vessel that's coming out from FY. I believe he's bought it. He has, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the Timber could be in trouble if he doesn't get it fast enough. I think he just bought out for the pipe. Okay, so now with this, I don't. He won't go your scepter now. He's got pipe hell, but you, yeah, you, do, you go back for another this. Oh, sorry, another dispel with the lotus orb. It's also really good this game, considering they've got the desolate off. So the the bonus armor that's going to be able to give you. But PS your GOG still looking to to make something happen, playing aggressive. You know, Somnus still hunting to try and find kills here. They're going to walk outside the base. They just need the vision instead. Red Panda. Trying to kill off the sentry. They get the Orchid as well on the Shaman, so it stops the lockdown coming through to, to be able to control the storm. 
In the meantime, with the back line, DD gonna be able to just rip through the Monkey King, tries to TP up, and now with the beat get B expiring, they're gonna be able to cancel that TP. No defensive capability for him, and they'll even commit the egg as well. So they do lose the Monkey King there. Shadow Fiend just ripped through him on the back line there. But unfortunately, used that full BKB duration. Somnus down 19 Bloodstone charges. A 13,000 net worth lead. The Monkey died a lot faster than what I thought he was going to. I didn't actually see the initiation. He didn't even Requiem as well. So mon the right... Because uh, Monkey didn't get controlled. He but you see how difficult it is for Sparking to take these fights, though. Like, they die can shove out the lanes. Like, you have Phoenix Pock as your support duo, which is very good at being able to push out the lanes. Like, even the rest of your heroes, Monkey King, Storm, Centaur. But SAG have no cash, so they're able to push out the lanes pretty freely. So it just means LGD have this map control, and you're just infiltrating. You're, you're, you're putting so much presence on the map where Radiant actually can't get enough items like you see 13,000 behind unable to really keep up with with all the graphs right now which is the, which is the issue and i mean you take a look as well already die have all of their tier 3 neutral items reading only have one the good thing is they do have the um, repair kit though one probably the most broken neutral item you know we're not really seeing t4 even games aren't even lasting long enough to see t4 is that that's even a luxury in itself if, if a game goes this long i mean 27 minutes this is in the past two games this is the longest we've seen actually maybe the game's earlier today no so the second game was 26 minutes uh actually how long was game two that was pretty fast as well wasn't it yeah 21 minutes so yeah this is the longest game i've seen in at least the past two days, you know, we saw like a 17 minute GG. The longest game yesterday was like 24 minutes. So people are just not going. They're getting nowhere near the, the T4 items, but. But the presence that LGD are able to have across the map. Yeah, just rating can't find these neutral items, which is at least they do have that repair kit. You know, the important one. So when Dai start walking up behind, and this is the issue with Dai's lineup, is that they do really, really lack a way to hit objectives. Like now going up high gun, uh, it's rough. Like you might be able to drop Wukong's command to auto 11. Should be fine. You, you see he didn't even blink. He's like, I know I've got reinforcements in the back line. Maybe I can bait out something and, and force them to commit to, um, to me heavily, but... Long zip in. Who do they find mid? It's going to be the Phantom Lancer. FY should have to fall up afterwards. On the back line is Felix. Gets the Hex out on the Sensor, but it's not going to be enough to stop the damage. Somnus, free reign of that fight with the Lotus Orb on top of him. He's even got a regen as well. We'll get counted out straight away from the Timber Sword, but it's just more Bloodstone charges for the Storm. Up to 21 now. Uh-oh. They don't have buyback too. The only... I mean... There you go. It's still going to be difficult for them walking up. Uh, it's not going to be easy though. Who's got the repair kit? It looks like OP does. So maybe if they can get force out some repair kits early, but DD stacks up the Requiem here, drags them all back. Now with the BKB, just doesn't get the raise combo in. Pop the BKB Requiem. I mean, now they feel pretty safe going up high ground. All right. And they can even stay here in Wukong's man. They still have it. Actually, they've got Desolator. So Monkey's got a decent chunk of items. Oh. Initiation, who they find Chen. That's a big target. That's a lot of the sustain. The Orchid out as well on the Timber Saw. Chen's got the protection of the Glimmer Cape. We'll be able to back off to the southern side here. Repair kit. That is that first charge. Phantom Lance is going to be up in a couple seconds here. They even used the Serp Wards. Not going to trap anyone in. Lotus Orb already used. The Monkey King going to get controlled here. Can they protect him out with Zip on the back line? We'll deal with the Shackles. Age is going to tick out now, but the Monkey King BKB protection. Phantom Lancer just has no impact. Brought down straight away. No buybacks available as well. Now Somnus. That Aegis regen, able to get a fresh mana pool coming out as well. As long as it pins, Somnus finds a Shaman. You, as soon as you go on the hero that has the lockdown, Somnus doesn't have to worry about anyone dealing with him. Straight on top of the Shaman, brings him down instantly. And this is the issue about the SAG lineup, is that you can't deal... Like, Somnus has free roam of this game. One death, 23 Bloodstone charges. This is just going to go down by FY just scouting out. They even get the vision onto the Shadow Fiend here. So the initiation straight on top of him. They might just call it quits here. It's going to be a second set of racks. Is that all the repair charges? I think it might be. All the repair charges are down. They don't have a tier 2 top as well. 
Old 11 can do a little bit of chip damage onto that tower, but I said Dire were going to lack a way to go higher gun, but I mean, the Death Soul Monkey King, and uh, they got a lot more pickoffs than what I was expecting when they walked up. I mean, that's they couldn't go up until they got pickoffs. So if SA just kind of sat in the base, which they, they didn't, and they pay the price now. Now their full set of racks is exposed up top. Pierce Centaur falling low. Uh, we get a lot of heals coming through. He's got a couple of one charge as well. Now with the coat connects up to two summoners straight away on top of the shaman. He getting rid of the lockdown. And now Phantom Line's gonna be careful as well, but the coat control him. They're able to get their hand of God. God key on the background thanks to the doppelganger, but it's not gonna matter. Three heroes down, and that's gonna end up dropping the G's. PSG OGD, they'll get revenge. A 2-1 victory from them. Very nicely done. Very, very nicely done. I mean, the Storm just had a free, free game. Unfortunately, Shaman, the only one to really provide the lockdown. That's why I really wanted to see the Yules on the Shadow Fiend. Like, just to give you some, like, effect to be able to kite the monkey and also offer some, like, Yules into Requiem combo to kill the Storm. In the end, it just felt like, I mean, Sparking had a lot more of a lineup that, I mean, like, Chen playing for, from behind feels pretty awful. Like, you, you're someone that really wants to put pressure on towers, but... It's the issue is that, like, Timber has a decent lane matchup. Uh, it just... The issue is, is that PSG OGD have much better heroes to, to do stuff throughout, like, the 15-minute mark, even beforehand, so Sparking can't get any map control. And as soon as LGD get, like, a sniff of, of an advantage, as soon as Somnus has Bloodstone, he can just, like, have a free map, and they just have so much mobility, and they just infiltrate the jungle, and Sparking just unable to find the items i mean this is very similar to how we saw like game one and game two one team gets a big uh, you know it's kind of even they get that advantage and then it just increases from there like there was no turning back as soon as you lose the map control for a team that's going to be better in the late game or at least have a better chance in the late game you know if they're going to win it like I'd, I'd say it is a pretty good phantom lancer game i know the chen's going to fall off so i'd say it definitely they're better uh, percentage of winning was later on with the PL coming online but I mean he, he went for he, he had queued up a halberd as well I think in the end he was going like satanic or something but uh just a really nice execution coming through from from PSG OGD they ramp up the pressure when they need to storm gets active early knows they don't have a lot of lockdown so he's able to find that bloodstone at a decent timing and then yeah from there OGD will be able to take the series 2-1 for them that is only our first series done tonight. However, we're going to have Vici Gaming up against Asta. That's going to be about a half an hour break. Shouldn't be uh, about half an hour. The lobby's already up, so um, we'll see you guys then. Asta up against Vici is the next one.